We just finished up here at L'Atelier. Uh, eight courses all in all, uh, with two dessert courses and a, a mousse. What'd you think? Uh, it's the best meal of the year. I'm gonna go one further. I think it's the best meal of my life. Oh. Hey everybody, I'm Josh. And I'm Rachel. And tonight, I'm super stoked to try out L'Atelier. We're not gonna pronounce this right. Yeah. Lots of French words tonight. We don't know how it goes. But Joel Robichon has been named the greatest chef in the world. He is no longer alive, but he did have the <laughs> most Michelin stars. So he was named the best chef in the world. And I will tell you, this has been on Josh's bucket list or one of his restaurants since I met him. So lots I'm excited of, for this yeah. one thing. Lots to live up to. Let's hope it's good. Let's go. Alright, settle in. We're both doing the seasonal discovery menu. It is $150 per person and it is... I want to say seven when I count. Seven courses and we might get extra. Yeah, because there's a dessert, yeah. coffee souffle that might be in our near future. <laughs> You're going to want to see this one. Here's your bread. A baguette. Milk infused brioche and olive oil croissant with some butter. Alright, the amuse bouche is here. White asparagus panna with a spicy tomato sauce. We got this little spoon, so I'm, a spoon, I'm assuming I'm supposed to use it. Yeah, I will say before I get started in this, we get the bread. I'm eating all the bread because I want the butter. Like, I would eat that pan of butter. The butter is next level. <laughs> the bread's really good, too. But yeah. what I'm saying is the butter, oh my god, it's so good. There's some gold flake on this. Yeah, there's gold flake on this. Cheers. Cheers. It's exactly what it said. Yeah. Spicy tomato soup, which is like the overwhelming piece for me. The panna cotta was so creamy and delicious. It reminded delicious. me something of a um, mozzarella bite. Yeah, it is very cheesy, like yeah. which I never thought of for panna cotta. Um, I usually just think of it as like a more Bland custard. Yeah, but this was not. <laughs> There's nothing bland about that bite. All right. <laughs> Lay crab royale. Yeah. Uh, king crab with daikon raviolis with sweet and sour vinaigrette. And what is that black sauce? Black garlic aioli. Is that what he said? Yep. Black garlic aioli. Which, so I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna definitely get that. So when they're talking about daikon ravioli, um. It is like very thinly sliced daikon on the top and the bottom, and then slight small shards of radish. I want that uh, black garlic. All right, I'm like I want to bathe in it. <laughs> it's so good. I haven't eaten the ravioli yet. Yeah, I just licked my finger at a very fancy restaurant because that garlic sauce is so good. <laughs> you should try the crab if you I'm like garlic it. sauce. <laughs> yeah. Subtlety mm -hmm. is key here. Details are key. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, I know people are kind of going to be like, this is ridiculous. Tiny bites. I, I can get so much more food somewhere else. It's very subtle pieces that you're going to notice, and that's why it's small bites. It's yeah. Take your time when you're eating this stuff. Um, super subtle, super fresh crab. The daikon does add to it, but it also doesn't take away from it. If you go back and watch our best friend, it's not like that strong daikon there. Right. This is very, very, very subtle daikon. It's just like, to me, a, 
a vehicle for transport of the crab. Like that's what it adds it is. a little crisp. Yeah, it does add a little and bit of some freshness, I would say. But it is so good. I think the star of this one is that black garlic aioli. Gyoza. Gyoza. It's a fun word to say. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm a little nervous for Josh to try this one because they did say it's mushroom and ham inside. You know I don't like a mushroom. <laughs> All right, so it's like a French pot sticker apparently uh, with ham and mushroom. Yep. It's beautifully plated. I don't remember what the foam is. I don't remember that either. But there is a foam. Yep. There's some big chunks of mushroom. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to eat it. Don't eat the mushrooms. I'll eat them. I don't intend to. God, I hope I'm okay with this. We're hot. All right. Okay, here I can see some ham and Parmesan slices. Mm -hmm. Getting some foam. So it's cooked really warm. It's very nicely crusted. That ham and mushroom, it gives a very strong ham and mushroom flavor. I did not notice the texture of mushrooms, so I'm hoping Josh doesn't either. I agree. I There are big chunks of mushrooms on the yeah. outside, which I'm gonna eat because they're delicious. Uh, yeah. The prosciutto and I Parmesan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love mushrooms. <laughs> um, it, that's a good gyoza. What about, how did you feel? It's super good. Um, all right, so the, the wrapper, is, it's not super thick. It eats well. The, the pot sticker part is so crisp. It gives the texture for the whole thing that's, which that's which is I part of my problem with mushrooms is yeah. the texture it's not the flavor um, but like that takes over it and that's why I thought you would like it I need another bite it's so good <laughs> it is hard to describe honestly uh -huh. um, but it's delicious it's very earthy you can really taste that ham and mushroom the flavors of but those it's not out. overwhelming in any no. way but that gyoza <laughs> that gyoza is that texture that gyoza makes right. that dish. And we just had din, din tai fun yesterday <laughs> with pot stickers. And this one single one. I would pay more for this than the five at din tai fun. Alright, okay. And I gotta eat all the mushrooms on the plate. <laughs> oh, shucks. <laughs> Next. This is Maine lobster. Alright. So we're thinking it's like the lobster we had in Maine. We'll see, we did try a ton of different Maine lobster, but this one is Maine lobster roasted in salted butter with a spicy lobster bisque. You can see they poured it over the top when he brought it to us. All right, and it looks like a piece of bok choy as well. Are you, are you eating lobster first? Yeah, it's a lobster dish. I just love my vegetables. <laughs> so the bok choy is just basically steamed, very simple, per, uh, but it, you do get to dip it in the spicy lobster bisque, which then flavors a ton of it. I think it tastes great. It tastes like a, not a grilled lobster. Um, yeah, roasted. That's, I was gonna say, cause it's got texture. It's not like it's steamed. It's not like it's fried. Um, it is a roasted, so you've got a little bit of texture on the outside. The spicy lobster bisque, I do think um, is a very strong flavor. I really like it. Cause I'm a big spicy fan. What do you think? I am actually shocked with the lobster. I think it's too chewy. Oh, that's think, like, do you think it's overcooked? I do. Um, flavor wise, I love everything else about the dish. There's lima beans, there's the, like Josh said, the cream, and I think it does cut down the spiciness of the bisque. The lobster itself is probably the disappointing piece for me. And I'll have to try a second bite. May, I may be wrong, but that's right. my initial thoughts on it. All right, see you tomorrow. The biscuit itself is delicious. I like that part of it. Yeah, I really like the soup. I would not say it takes away from the tasting menu that we're having. I'm just saying so far it's not my favorite dish. It just doesn't hit, it doesn't hit the notes for me. No, I, I do not think that this is my favorite dish. I think it's a fine dish, mm -hmm. but it's not, it's not better than the, I can say the gyoza, like that. Boom. Boom. I want it. I yeah. want, I need more of it. Yeah. This, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. But it's, yeah, it's not the, the next not level, the next earth level. shattering dish. Fifth course, 
This is Mediter Mediterranean Rougeau fish with crispy saffron rice and r red bell pepper sauce. It also has some olives and uh, tomatoes on top. Yep. Two of our, uh, two of the wait staff have actually said that this is their favorite dish. Yeah. And I will tell you, I was just telling Josh as we were watching, you get to sit at this counter and watch the entire kitchen. Their attention to detail is next level. It's so cool. <laughs> How that brass dish did not have a pizzao. This does. This does. This is delicious. The sauce. The sauce. The, the sauce is so the good. The skin on the fish. Yep, those are the two things I know the most. And then you add the saltiness and brine of the olives and tomato on top. Yeah. <laughs> and like a lot of times when I see a crispy rice, I don't get excited about it because I think that the rice is too hard. This is not. It eats more like a rice hash brown, honestly. Yeah, that's what it looks like too. Mm -hmm. Like I love that olive and tomato combo with it. I understand why that's her favorite. Because mm -hmm. it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Literally awesome. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> Main course. So this is the only di only course where we actually went with two different ones, and we just said bring us both. Yeah. Um, so Rachel has the roasted duck with five spice cranberries and walnuts. It has candy walnuts on the outside, poached pears, um, and then I have the caramelized quail filled with foie gras, served with potato puree. And they did say. They are famous for potato puree. Yeah, you cannot come here without trying some of their pure potato puree. So, so they, we are. <laughs> they gave us some extra, so... And they said they recommend eating this first. It's so creamy. I, it's, <laughs> it's hard to call it a potato. Yeah, it's so good. Um, yeah, there's got to be so much. And one of the good things is because this restaurant, the, the kitchen is open. And so you can see them like constantly working that mashed potato, actually. Yeah. Okay, I have the roasted duck breast. All right. What you got going there? Are you gonna speak? Are you okay? Yeah, for the, some of those, <laughs> or for those of you who know me, to render me speechless is like almost impossible. I, it is sweet. It melts in your mouth. The crunch of this uh, caramelized walnut on top. And I haven't got to the poached pear yet. That right there is the best bite of the night. Wow. Yeah, it's really? that good. So, so good. All right, well, I'm going to say you have something in the running for the best bite of the night. And it is this quail. Really? It's actually so dang good. I actually was thinking in my head, the quail was going to be the the safe bet. You know, it was going to be the closest to getting a piece of chicken as you could get, you know. It's good, but it's not going to be overwhelming. Again. I noticed, or we talked about it on several other dishes, the sauces. Yeah. The sauces make these things so good. I think Josh is going to eat all of the quail. Nope, because I <laughs> want some of that duck. I hope I said enough about it, but it just melts. It's so rich and flavorful. Wow. Wow, wow. Fancy. All right, my turn with duck. It's a bite that keeps on going, so I it do understand what going. you're saying, though. I think I now can't decide on the best bite of the night. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And it's the sauce that adds to this, like... I'm telling you, that sauce is amazing. These two? All right. That, you're not going to go wrong either way? No, that fish was delicious. I will say that. Yes. These two? I, I hate to disagree with the wait staff, but... These two are my favorite. Ice cream and coconut mousse. Ginger tea over dry ice. <laughs> nice. Yes. So 
Anything else we get for you at the moment? I don't think so, thank you. You want? Enjoy. Alright, dessert time. So this is called La Citronelle. It is caramelized ginger chantilly, lemongrass, ice cream, coconut mousse, and sesame. They look like rocks. It, it does. It looks like three rocks. And apparently each one is one of those different elements. Um, you can see it literally looks like a rock. I was telling Josh as they brought this out and like we're doing their fancy schmancy presentation. Like, this is stupid fun. <laughs> this is so cool. She literally did say, this is stupid. Yeah, I'm like, this In the is, best way. Yeah, it's like the best way possible. You know, like that totally bizarre, absurd. Like, I can't even imagine that this is real because this is so... So good. So good. <laughs> yeah. Wow. All right, so everything is just so creamy and so... Like perfectly smooth. Oh, no, it's cold. Yeah, you got the ice cream that one. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, one of them is lemongrass ice cream wrapped in a white chocolate. But they, they all look like rocks, so it's very difficult to know which is which. Wow. Uh, lemongrass has a very strong flavor. But it's refreshing, like palate cleansing. It's so tasty. Alright, guys, again. Yeah. It's going to be a contender for top restaurant of the year. <laughs> Alright, so compliments to the chef. And I'm with Josh. <sighs> Four pieces of pie. <laughs> we'll call them pie. Yeah. Um, so there's cinnamon, passion fruit, lemon curd, and Snickers style. You take two, I'll take two? I uh, know. We'll try it later. By the way, we have had gold flakes on Everything. three different dishes, yeah. at least. Mm. The cinnamon tastes like the, a cinnamon roll. A very powerful cinnamon roll. That is a super strong lemon curd flavor. I like it. I'm a big lemon fan, anyway. Yeah. Oh boy. The Snickers one. The caramel is uh, Caramely. working on me. <laughs> So you can see caramel, chocolate, gold, and some nuts. The passion fruit is tart. It might be why well, I haven't tried the lemon one yet. They're all delicious. Such a starch, uh, such a strong contrast in flavors. How could you pick a favorite? Right. <laughs> They're freaking good. <laughs> we just finished up here at L'Atelier. Uh, eight courses, all in all. Uh, with two dessert courses and a, a mousse. What do you think? Uh, it's the best meal of the year. I'm gonna go one further. I think it's the best meal of my life. Oh, I, I almost. Yep. When you add every single aspect of ambiance, service, food. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> this the food was on point, and I love. I love the fact that it's a bar setting where you look in the in the uh, kitchen. kitchen and watch the food being prepared and watch how precise everything is. These guys are amazing. But you don't hear them. No, it's not like those cooking like, shows yeah. where people are screaming at each other and call them idiots and Nothing. idiot and sandwiches or whatever Gordon Ramsay says. The funny part is too is there's like this little sink that they keep putting dirty dishes in and then it's like a ninja comes in and washes them because then the dishes yeah. are gone. <laughs> it's, it's so weird and amazing great. and cool all in one shot. Yep. It is. I. Yeah, I don't know that I've had a better meal. I. <laughs> I don't either. It's so freaking good. It's not the most expensive meal we've done here in Vegas, so when we look at the price, it, it, it's not cheap. But boy, it everything was on point. Uh, every single thing. There was... I, I was trying to think of like just one thing, and I can't think of anything. I, and from even making the reservations, they call you day before, check on your allergies, they... It's, you get it. You get it. We love it. <laughs> You should try and check it out. That's right. If you're enjoying our videos, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. You can also follow us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All our links are down below. Thank you.